am so excited about today's lesson. We are in a series on sacred stories, which are stories all about the people of God. And the lesson we have for today is all about the story of the Exodus. But before we get to our lesson for today, I thought we could take a moment and get ready together. Normally, when you guys come to the classroom, there's a doorkeeper, the other teacher at the door, who would greet you and say hello, whether that be Mr. Rick or Mr. Randy, or maybe Miss Pam or Miss Christina, they say hello, and then you would enter the classroom, which was a little bit like crossing over a threshold. And then you would find a spot in our circle, and together we would get ready to hear the story. Now getting ready is so important because it helps you focus where you can hear what the story has for you that day. So let's get ready together before we hear our lesson. One of my favorite ways to get ready is to take three great big deep breaths. And when you take great three great big deep breaths, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine when you breathe in that you're taking all the air from the entire room. And then when you breathe out, that there's a little sailboat and that you're pushing it all the way across the ocean with your breath. Can you take three great big deep breaths with me and imagine that when you do it? Okay, let's begin. One. Two. Three. Okay, I think we're ready now. This is the desert. Not the entire desert, that would be impossible to fit into a room, but it is a piece of the desert. And we sent a piece of the desert home with you, too. We need a piece of the desert because so many important things happen to the people of God here. But the desert is also a dangerous place. The sun is so hot during the day that the people need to wear several layers of clothing to not get burned. And it's so cold at night that they need several layers of clothing then too. And when the wind blows, the shape of the desert changes and it can be easy to lose your way. The desert is a dangerous place it takes courage to go through the desert. Now the people of God were living in a land where the rains did not come. And since the rain did not come, the crops had no water and the food was not able to grow. The people were hungry, and so they decided that they would go and find a new land, even if it meant crossing the dangerous desert. So their journey began. And the journey was hard. But the people of God continued on until they came to a land called Egypt. When they arrived in Egypt, they found that this land had food and water for them. But there was also a king called a Pharaoh and the Pharaoh trapped the people of God and would not allow them to go back home. The Pharaoh decided when the people would wake up and when they would go to bed. The Pharaoh decided when they would eat 
the Pharaoh decided all the work they would do. The people of God were slaves. One of the people of God, called Moses, went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, no. But Moses was determined. So he went back to Pharaoh and said again, let my people go. Pharaoh said, no. Strange things began to happen in the land. So when this started happening, Moses went back to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, no. Then something terrible happened. The firstborn boy of each of the Egyptian families died, even in the family of Pharaoh. But the firstborn boy of all the families of the people of God did not die. They put a mark on their door. The blood of a lamb and the angel of death passed over them. When this happened, Moses went once again to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, yes. So the people of God began to hurry and pack all their belongings, everything that they could carry to bring out of the land of Egypt. And they even baked bread. But there was no time to let the bread sit with leaven and make it big and fluffy like the bread that we see in the supermarket today. Instead, the bread called matzo was flat like this. And we sent some of this home with you too. And when you taste this bread, you can taste the story. So once the people of God got all their belongings packed, including their matzo bread, they began to hurry out of the land of Egypt. They were going as fast as they could because they were so afraid that the Pharaoh would change their mind and make them stay. Suddenly, the people of God heard something they didn't want to hear. The ground began to shake, and the hoofs began beating, and the rolling of the chariots and all the noise together sounded like thunder. And the people of God were pushed up against the water by Pharaoh's army, and they were afraid. But then God came so close to Moses and Moses came so close to God that he knew what to do to lead the people into freedom. This one looks happy. This one looks a little scared. This one's leaping. This one's a little confused. And once the people of God made it to the other side, the waters closed back up. And Pharaoh's army was no longer able to get to the people of God. They were free and saved. And once they realized they were free, the people of God began praising God and giving him thanks. And Miriam, Moses' sister, led the dancing. Now I wonder what part of this story you liked the best. And I wonder if any part of this story is about you or especially for you. I wonder if we could take away any part of this story and still have all the story that we need. 
Well, that's all I have for today's lesson. Thank you for wondering with me and for listening to the sacred story. Um, if you want to email me, say you try the matzo bread, I'd love to hear what you thought about it. Or maybe you do one of the coloring pages we included um, for the Exodus lesson, or maybe you do a craft that's different. If you want to share any of your work with me, I'd love to see it. But if not, um, I will definitely see you guys next time.